And are you, are you back doing stand-up? There was some sort of discussion that you were, might not do stand-up again? Or well, there wasn't. Kind of a... really, I mean, it was, there was, like, some things where during lockdown, obviously all of us would get asked, every comedian would be asked, like, how are you coping not doing stand-up at the minute? And I'd just honestly be like, oh, I really like it. <laughs> I really like not doing it. Feels quite good, and they're like, "Will you, will you, will you do it again when it when it opens up?" I was like, "At the minute, I'd gladly not do it again." But <laughs> but I'd always say, "But you know, I might change my mind on that, and I might do it you know, in another two weeks. I might want to do stand up." Yeah. But obviously, they'll cut that bit out of the interview <laughs> and just be like, "He's talking about quitting. He says he's quit." So then, when I started doing stand up again um, this year, a lot of comics would come up to me. I go, hey, heard you've come out of retirement. I was like, don't tell people that. Because it makes me look like a prick. If I'm like, oh, yeah, I retired. When? 2020. <laughs> I came back. Oh, uh, yeah, 2022, I came back. <laughs> just, I was in retirement for a while. But now I'm out of retirement. Cool. So I didn't really. I, I, I was just like, I needed time away from it. And that coincided with a global pandemic. So <laughs> it worked out very nice. Pretty lucky. And you just been in America doing is it were you doing new stuff or were you doing the Yeah, new company? stuff. Yeah. So the show's called Heckler's Welcome. Um, okay. and they're told they're allowed to do whatever they want. Okay. That's the show. And I I've got yeah, I've got an hour and a half of material that is all about why I'm asking them to do this and why I've decided that. Okay. But um yeah the top of the show is just that they're allowed to heckle. They're allowed to talk amongst themselves, be on their phones, go to the bar, go to the toilet. I won't go, where are you going? Uh, when, when, if they stand up. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes I don't heckle at all. Sometimes the whole show, I get destroyed. Yeah. And it depends. That's an interesting way to go because you seemed, certainly last time I spoke to you, you seemed annoyed by people wrecking your shows by yes. shouting stuff out. Yeah, I was really annoyed about it. Really hated it, and that's why I didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah, I was like, I don't want to go on stage anymore because uh, every time I work really, really hard on a show for ages and ages and ages, and all the work in progress crowd, crowds are brilliant because they're there, they love to see the process, and they want to see you making stand up comedy, so they're great. And then you take it on tour, and uh, it's a fucking nightmare, <laughs> and it's just people shouting out poppadoms or bread <laughs> repeatedly, <laughs> just like over everything. Yeah. Doesn't matter what you're talking about. <laughs> talking about having suicidal thoughts, and they're like, cheese board! Yeah, yeah, cheese board! <laughs> right, great. Um, and, and you go, oh, I really worked hard on this show, and I, I seem to have worked hard on it to perform it to the worst people I could perform it to. And, um, you know, that tour was quite long. And by the end, I was like, I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of like going out there for two hours a night doing a show I've worked really, really hard on. And people heckle me, people talk amongst themselves. Always there's some people with their phones on just looking at their phone. You can see it lit up <laughs> while you're on stage doing a bit and you, you're like, oh, this, feel, this makes me feel like shit. And, um, and also, I would not keep any of those thoughts in my head. So, you know, pretty much most, most comics I know hate all of that stuff and it ruins it for them. Yeah. But they don't all on stage go, do you know what? You're not probably the shittest crowd I've ever fucking performed to. <laughs> So I would do that every yeah. third gig if I was lucky. <laughs> uh, and just tell them they were a shit crowd and tell them this gig is rubbish and it, you know, single out individuals and be like, get off your fucking phone. And, uh, like, you know, and it would be horrible. And I'd come off feeling even worse and mainly beat myself up about it and, and be like, oh, why are you, you know, just, just go on and just do the show. Why do you focus on all the people who aren't behaving? Most of them are. Most of them are there to see it, want to see a good show. They've paid money to see you. So I'd really like give myself a hard time. And uh, at the end of the tour, because on every single tour that I've ever done, at the start, I'd be like, right, this is the tour where you don't do any of that. You don't tell them off. You don't do that. Here we go. And then I'd do it within the first month of yeah. like a, you know, whatever, six-month tour. And then you're like, right, well, that's, we're fucked now. And that's <laughs> going to be the whole thing. And I got to the end of the 2019 one and was like, you just, this is never going to stop. They're always going to keep heckling you. They're always going to keep talking while you're on. They're always going to keep being on their phones. They're always going to keep showing up late and like um, being like cocky pricks when you ask them where they were. <laughs> like it's the, the whole thing is not going to feel nice. So you either quit or you figure out how to deal with this because they're not going to stop. Yeah. And to stop, to, to kind of constantly think that they have to change when they are everyone in the world <laughs> is unreasonable. And you just have to accept 
I, every now and again, I will get an audience that is the audience that I always think to myself, I hope I perform to that audience. Sometimes that, that will happen. And the times where it doesn't, you just have to accept that that's what's going on that night and you're there for work and you're getting paid yeah. and just, just do it. So because all the things I was scared of were all of those things, so it was like, let's do a show where they're allowed to do it all and you tell them they're allowed to do it all and let's see if that makes you feel better. I didn't know if it would or not. And just pretty much straight away, it just felt better. Right. Because like, I'd say they're allowed to do it, so then it's like they're not being dicks then. Yeah. Because like, they were allowed to. So when they do it, it's like, you know, yeah. And some, some of them I talk to, some of them I ignore. They're told that at the top, that if I ignore you, it's not because I don't like your heckle or and if I don't like you. It's just because like, I was you know, doing something else at the time. I didn't respond to you. Uh, most of the time it is if it's Poppadons or Bread or something. There's no point responding to that. There's no <laughs> funny thing to riff out of it, so you just ignore that and carry on. But um, it just didn't feel like any more like they were being, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, they were being dicks because like, yeah, you made the rules that they were allowed to do that. And, yeah, it's an interesting way to go. I, I sort of find it interesting that it's obviously like a, it's a, it's a, it's a result of success, really, because like for me... I just the people who come and see my show. This is why I'm not successful. If, if you once you get to a certain level of success, a different audience comes. Right? People who come to my gigs just like my stuff and uh -huh. don't and don't generally sh shout out. Sure. Um, I mean, I, you know, we'd have a new catchphrase that the audience can shout out. I think we can do it now if you want. There you go. Um, <laughs> so I might that might start happening and ruining the show. But, you know, it's, it, it's sort of interesting because it seems to me you get over a certain level. Rich Hall was on and he did, in America, he did this thing called Sniglets, I think they were called, that became very big on TV. Yeah. But you couldn't do them on stage. They were just like the, um, the meaning of lift, basically. You know, the right, John, yeah. John Lloyd did where it's alternate definitions of yeah. the things that haven't got definitions. Uh, and he would go to gigs and everyone would just shout, do Sniglets at him, and he couldn't do them and it just ruined every gig. Yeah. So he moved to England, you know, he moved to the UK where yeah. no one knew about it. Which was, but your stuff is sort of world, you know, because of the podcast, the success of Off Venue, it's a worldwide success, right? So you're still getting that. And you've just been in America and people are shouting. Yeah, well, in, in America, they know Off Menu, they know the Netflix shows and they know um, Taskmaster. Right. Um, Taskmaster's the main one. If you, like, don't ever gig it there, Rich. Okay, I wouldn't. <laughs> There's a like, Taskmaster as soon as you go on. I yeah. just want to hear everything about Taskmaster. Why didn't you say hello to Alex Horn? That's what <laughs> every gig. <laughs> and every time I go, because it was funny. I'm a comic. It was fucking thick. But that's what I'm trying not to do. So I have a go at them. So you just be a bit more playful. <laughs> but yeah, they they, they want to know that. But yeah, uh, yeah so there's, there's a bit of that sometimes. But, is the um, Taskmaster just online though in, in America, or is it I don't on know. TV? I think it is. I mean, I I, I, want, I didn't ask them because I didn't want to talk any more about Taskmaster. <laughs> did I? I'm heading out there. I'm the champion of champions. Mate. You are champion. I of wasn't champions. champion of champions when I talked to you last. I might have been, but I didn't. No, no, yeah, yeah. You're champion of champions now. I mean, I mean you no, know, I'd be like a god out there, right? You will be a god. I mean, I they think, don't. They don't really I'm listen to my podcast. Pretty sure there. you're a fan favorite. <laughs> did it with one ball. That's the thing. That's why it, that should have turned them round. So did I, but I didn't make a big deal of it. <laughs> Had it pop back in after the series. I mean, you probably... Took it out before the series <laughs> to make me more aerodynamic. Yeah. Put it back in afterwards. I thought you might have lost it when you were going around in circles. Yeah. Not when you hadn't read the... <laughs>